freshman year, fall, 1994. Entry 1, Miss Gruel. Dear Diary, Tomorrow morning, my journey as an English teacher officially begins. Since first impressions are so important, I wonder what my students will think about me. Will they think I'm out of touch or too preppy? Or worse yet, that I'm too young to be taken seriously? Maybe I'll have them write a journal entry describing what their expectations are of me and the class. Even though I spent last year as a student teacher at Wilson High School, I'm still learning my way around the city. Long Beach is so different than the gated community I grew up in. Thanks to MTV dubbing Long Beach as the gangster rap capital with its depiction of guns and graffiti, my friends have a warped perception of the city, or LBC as the rappers refer to it. They think I should wear a bulletproof vest rather than pearls. Where I live in Newport Beach is a utopia compared to some of the neighbourhoods seen in the Snoop Doggy Dog video. Still, TV tends to blow things out of proportion. The school is actually located in a safe neighbourhood just a few miles from the ocean. Its location and reputation make it desirable. So much so that a lot of the students that live in what they call the hood take two or three buses just to get to school every day. Students come in from every corner of the city. Rich kids from the shore sit next to poor kids from the projects. There's every race, religion and culture within the confines of the quad. But since the Rodney King riots, racial tension has spilled over into the school. Due to busing and an outbreaking gang activity, Wilson's traditional white, upper-class demographics have changed radically. African Americans, Latinos and Asians now make up the majority of the student body. As a student teacher last year, I was pretty naive. I wanted to see past colour and culture, but I was immediately confronted by it when the first bell rang and a student named Sherrod sauntered in bouncing a basketball. He was a junior, a disciplinary transfer from Wilson's crosstown rival, and his reputation preceded him. Word was that he had threatened his previous English teacher with a gun, which I later found out was only a plastic water gun, but it had all the makings of a dramatic showdown. In those first few minutes, he made it brutally clear that he hated Wilson, he hated English, and he hated me. His sole purpose was to make his preppy student teacher cry. Little did he know that within a month, he'd be the one crying. Sherrod came to be the butt of a bad joke. A classmate got tired of Sherrod's antics, drew a racial caricature of him with huge, exaggerated lips. As the drawing made its way around the class, the other students laughed hysterically. When Sherrod saw it, he looked as if he was going to cry. For the first time, his tough facade began to crack. When I got a hold of the picture, I went ballistic. This is the type of propaganda that the Nazis used during the Holocaust, I yelled. When a student timidly asked me, what's the Holocaust? I was shocked. I asked, how many of you have heard of the Holocaust? Not a single person raised his hand. Then I asked, how many of you have been shot at? Nearly every hand went up. 